everyone and welcome to our study. Tonight is Tuesday, May 5. Father in heaven, now we invite your spirit to guide our thoughts, our understanding. We may get the most important instructions for us, for I pray in Jesus' name. The Bible and culture. Our study guide provides passages for us to, to read and that is Acts 17, 16 to 32. I will read only verse 26 where it says, And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods in the boundaries of their dwelling place. Acts 17, 26, English Standard Version. This text is the biblical text. Where is the culture there? Our topic is the Bible and culture. If we read this text in the immediate context, you will find out that Paul was preaching. He delivered this message. He delivered this truth to the Greek philosophers in Athens. So therefore, the culture there is the Greek culture, the Athenians, the philosophers. And according to the preceding verses there, Paul saw representatives of their culture. He saw so many idols in Athens. And there was an inscription there which said, to the unknown God. And Paul started preaching the truth from that by introducing or by contrasting his God. The gods of the Athens are unknown to them. But Paul was saying, his God is the God who made one man and all nations from that one man. So the message or the truth about God who is the creator of everything, God who is the originator of mankind has actually come in the form of Jesus Christ. That is the biblical message and this passage, verse 26, gives us the general idea in as far as the message is concerned, the transcultural and transtemporal dimension of the message of God. When we say transcultural, the message of God transcends or go beyond the culture in which the message was originally delivered. But the message of salvation about the Creator God does not limit to the Jewish culture. It goes beyond other culture. That's what we mean by transcultural. Transtemporal simply means that the message is not limited to the time of the Jews, but it includes other times from the time it was delivered until now and until the coming of Jesus Christ. So, all periods, all the time from the time it was delivered, the message was applicable to all cultures at all times. That's what it means. The biblical message in our studies telling us is transcultural and transtemporal. I'd like to make it clear that not all passages of the Bible are transcultural Cultural, not all of them are transtemporal. This is the general assumption of the biblical writers. General. But I will show you tonight in our study that there are passages in the scriptures which are not transcultural and not transtemporal in its application. I'll give you some examples of another transcultural and transtemporal. The example is the Sabbath observance. It is transcultural at the same time transtemporal because it links to the creation week. The principle is for all people at all time. Whatever is your culture, whatever is your religion, whatever is your color, God has designed man, the creator according to Paul, that man should have a rest. And that is a general accepted principle. We need to have rest. And so in Mark chapter 2 verse 27, the Sabbath was made for man. So that is transcultural, transtemporal. Another Another example is foot washing. In 1 Corinthians 11, 24-26, Do this in remembrance of me. You proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. You see? So we cannot replace any symbolism here, any practice here, except what is stated here. Okay? So it transcends all culture. At all times, we follow the same practice, the same form of observing humility. Another example of transcultural Transcultural, transtemporal. In other words, the principles here are applicable to all cultures at all times. 
Another example is the law of clean and unclean animals found in Leviticus 10, Acts 10, and other passages of scriptures. Peter was actually quoting Leviticus 11, 44, and 45. Be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. So the principle of holiness applies to all people at all times. Principles of health are applicable to all people at all times. By all means, we should be healthy and there are certain things we should avoid eating so that we can maintain a healthy body. We can avoid COVID-19. That is the principle there. So it does not limit to Jewish culture. It does not limit to Philippine culture. These principles of cleanliness, principles of holiness applies to all people. That's why we call it transcultural, transtemporal in its principles. Another example is the laws enjoined upon and Gentiles found in Acts 15. The Gentile converts, Christians, were advised by Jerusalem Council to abstain from, from sacrifice foods to idols and from blood and from sexual immorality. All these injunctions are applicable to all converts to Christianity. Okay? That's another example. The principles there of proper Christian behavior because this refers to the moral principles in the Old as well as in the New Testament. Therefore, the relevancy is on morality. Another one is marriage and divorce found in Genesis 1 which was affirmed by Jesus in Matthew 19 verse 8. Jesus said, Divorce was allowed by Moses because of the hardness of their heart, but it was not from the beginning. So Jesus was connecting this institution from the original concept of God on marriage. There should be no divorce. And God wanted to maintain the principle that there should be no divorce. And God becomes flexible in this issue. But the principle remains as is. Now, let's go to another concept aside from transcultural and transtemporal. I'd like you to understand another concept in hermeneutics, this so-called built-in statutes of limitation. There are texts in the Bible in which the text itself says this practice, these cultural activities should be stopped like that and therefore it is no longer binding to all Christians. It is limited to the Jewish culture. Example to that is the sacrificial or ceremonial laws. These sacrificial laws were given by God to the Jews according to the text that is built in Daniel 9.27 and you have there Exodus 25, 9, 40, Hebrews 8, 5, Psalms 46 to 8, Hebrews 10, 1 to 10, and Daniel 9, 27. I'm just quoting Daniel 9, 27. According to Daniel 9, 27, this sacrificial or ceremonial laws given to the Jewish nation, to that culture, exclusively to that culture, it says that he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. So the ceremonial sacrificial system found in the Old Testament can no longer be binding. We are no longer obligated to follow them because it has come to an end. The antitype Jesus Christ came. Those religious ceremonies rituals are only shadows of the things to come. So when the reality came, Jesus Christ, all the sacrificial systems were no longer in effect. So why do we stop doing that? Because there is a built-in statutes which limited the activity until Jesus Christ. So we do not decide this one should be stopped. The text itself says it should be stopped. Okay, so we no longer follow that. Another example is the civil laws as application of the Decalogue. So Daniel 9.24 and Acts 7. You see, the Lord has given the Jewish people the Ten Commandments or the Decalogue. That Ten Commandments are broad in its principles. They serve or it serve as the constitution Constitution of the Jewish economy, constitution of God's kingdom for all people. It applies to all people at all times. Now, when these constitutional principles are applied locally to the Jewish economy, the laws made out of the Ten Commandments are called ordinances or the civil laws referring to the Jewish economy at the time of the theocratic form of government. Theocratic form in a sense that it was God 
who was the king of Israel. So when these laws were applied to them, and when the theocratic form was no longer in effect, all the civil laws also stopped. So according to Daniel 9.24, 70 weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, and so on and so forth. So the people of God, this Jewish culture, have been given in prophecy 70 weeks to stop sinning in preparation for the coming of Jesus Christ in human form to be the Savior of men. And so in our computations, according to Daniel chapter 9, the 70 weeks is actually equals to 490 years. In this time prophecy started in 457 BC. I will not go into details. In 457 BC, there was a law issued by the king allowing the Jews to return to Jerusalem and rebuild it. Okay? So the 70 weeks from 457 BC ended in AD 34. What happened in AD 34 according to Acts? In AD 34, the Jews have stoned Stephen and the preaching of the gospel was no longer to the Jews but to the Gentiles. And the theocratic form of government was stopped in AD 34. Therefore, the civil laws, the ordinances made out of the Ten Commandments also stopped in AD 34. Therefore, the Christians are no longer obliged to keep the civil laws of the Jew. That is their culture. It stopped because the theocratic form of government also stopped in AD 34. So what we're saying is the assumptions of the writers of the Bible that all the scriptures are transcultural, transtemporal. But I want you to understand that there are exemptions. The exemption we are telling you is the built-in statutes of limitation. So when you come to passages in scriptures when you study about civil laws, about ceremonial laws, we are no longer obliged to follow them because the Bible itself says it must stop. So when it stops, we no, are no longer allowed or obligated to follow it. Okay, and there are other principles that I want you to understand in as far as culture is concerned. And we are referring to the biblical culture, the Jewish culture. We said in general it's transtemporal, transcultural. But there are things we need to understand like the built-in statutes limitations. And there are other, okay? Number one, not all biblical practices are normative. You can read in the Bible all the records of the patriarchs, all the people of God there, and the biblical writers objectively describe their life. And the description of their life includes the bad things they have done. For example, there are cases in the Bible you, where you see that Rape is there, murder is there, incest is there, even have the practice of uh, selling a daughter, a girl in extreme famine. They would sell a girl or they would eat the body. Yeah. So they are all biblical accounts describing the practices of the people, but these practices are not necessarily instructions. They are not necessarily norms that we have to follow. No. The Bible writers just describe them objectively in including the bad and the good, they are written there for our encouragement and for our inspiration. But we don't necessarily need to follow the bad things there. So that's what it means by not all biblical practices are normative. Just like not all culture should be followed because some cultures are bad culture. Some cultures are against the principles of us. We don't need to follow. That's what it means by not all biblical practices are normative. Another principle that we need to understand in as far as culture is concerned, time and place must be considered. So when you read a passage there like Romans 16, 16, Holy Kiss, uh, the time must be considered in the place okay, where it was practiced in our time. Slaves and owners, Ephesians 6, 5 to 9, is another example. We don't need to apply the principles governing slaves and owners when, when the place has no slavery. So place must be considered. Now, let's go into these reflections. When we study the biblical passages there, from Genesis up to Revelation, you notice that these passages were written in Jewish culture. Now, these are questions that needs to be answered by the Bible student because what we said last night was the end product of interpretation is application. 
the Bible student reading the biblical account with all those cultures should answer this question. Or what are the message and purpose of the passage that God want me to apply personally? So if you are reading all those rituals there, ceremonial laws there, you are reading all of those, they are all in the Bible, you ask the question, what are the message and purpose of the passage that God want me to apply personally? Second, how does this passage impact upon my own spiritual life? So you need to have answer to that when you read this passage, regardless of that culture. Because the answer to that makes the message of God transcultural and transtemporal. That's what it means. The principles there in the passage you are reading. When applied, when you get the message personally, therefore that becomes transcultural and transtemporal. Number three, what promises that is hard for me to claim. So when you read that passage, okay, so ask that question, what promise does it have for me to claim? If you're reading health laws there, what's the promise of God for you that you are under COVID-19 restriction? Number four, what portrait or picture of Jesus to praise Him for? See, in that particular passage. For example, you are reading the, the animals there, the offerings which represent Jesus. And when the animals were killed in the altar of burnt offering, the animals did not make any noise. And that refers to Jesus when he was offered at the cross. He did not open his mouth. And that is one trait that we can praise Jesus of. He did it for you. And then number five, what victory to experience? So these are the questions that you need to ask when you encounter, when you read the Bible, regarding regardless of the experience or regardless of the culture and regardless of your culture. Number six, what sin or failure to avoid? You notice this, you remember our discussion last night that application should be geared towards specific behaviors. What I said last night is this is the practice of Bible study which is missing in the church. We do not translate the biblical concept, the theory into practice. It's just like studying, driving, you have never driven a car. You see, Christian Christianity is a procedural knowledge. The Bible says it's not the hearer that is justified, but the doer. You see, so the challenge for the teacher is to translate the biblical concept into behavior. What sin or failure to avoid? What practical steps to take? And what command to perform out of gratitude. So these are specific behaviors a Bible student should answer so that after his study, he will perform the behavior. Doing this and answering all these questions in your Bible study, the message become transcultural and transtemporal. Father in heaven, thank you for the enlightenment. Be with us as we open your scriptures every time we read and study. We find answers to these questions, making the truth transcultural and transtemporal. Applying to us personally, transforming our lives, even though the passage has been spoken long time ago, but it speaks to us personally. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up the trumpet.